Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today's topic is going to be hyperbilirubinemia. And so we're going to be going over some of the high yield topics you're likely to see on the board exam. What are the two reasons that a newborn commonly has physiologic jaundice? Well, one of the reasons certainly is an increase in RBC mass with a high hemoglobin and high hematocrit. Also, a child can also have decreased gluconeural transferase the enzyme that's necessary and again if those two conditions are met then there are reasons that the newborn commonly has physiologic jaundice. Now what are the diagnostic features of physiologic jaundice? Well a patient with physiologic jaundice um, will have typically these features. Patients will have um, no jaundice in the first day peak total bilirubin generally is less than 13. The jaundice actually peaks at days 2 and 4 and it's seen on day 2 to 3. So it's not seen on the first day but on day 2 and 3 it starts and it peaks anytime between days 2 and 4. And the rate of rise is less than 5 uh, milligrams per deciliter in 24 hours. Also the direct bilirubin is less than 2 mg per deciliter and it decreases to almost normal in a week. So those are the criteria for physiologic jaundice. Now what are the studies you should do for the evaluation of all cases of neonatal jaundice? Well it's necessary when you're working up a patient for um, neonatal jaundice that you get a bilirubin total and direct levels CBC with diff and smear um, and also um, get the ABO and RH compatibility tests for the mother and the baby. So those three things are necessary for all cases of neonatal jaundice. Now there are many causes of direct hyperbilirubinemia but the one you'll be tested on is the anatomic malformation that always must be ruled out and that is biliary atresia. That's a key finding. So what is the clinical presentation that suggests the diagnosis of biliary atresia? Well, what happens here is that the baby generally becomes lethargic, has lack of interest in feeds, vomiting is present, hepatomegaly, jaundice, direct, and persistent alcoholic stool and dark urine are the key features. What is the first step in the management? Well, the ultrasound, you'll see a fibrous triangle and a present or an absent gallbladder. Also keep in mind that the next step is percutaneous liver biopsy. And finally, the preferred immediate therapy is surgery. First, operative cholangiogram followed by hepatoenterostomy, known as the Kasai procedure. Finally, the long-term therapy is going to be liver transplant. That was a quick review of some of the high yield topics, that is, physiologic jaundice and biliary atresia that you'll likely see on the COMLEX and USMLE board exams. Good luck in your preparation for the boards.